This is the GO Training Module 5.1.2, working for WHO as an international civil servant. By the end of this session, you should be able to describe existing codes of conduct that are applicable to all personnel working for WHO, including during emergency response. Let's talk about what is an international civil servant. According to its constitution, the article number 69 of WHO, WHO is a specialized agency of the UN ruled by Article 57 of the United Nations Charter, which was signed in 1945 in San Francisco. In this, it states, all staff members of the organization, WHO, are international civil servants. And this is again uh, emphasized in WHO Staff Regulations Article 1.1.1, Duties, Obligations and Privileges. So it's important to remember if you're working with WHO, if you're deployed by WHO, you will be considered an international civil servant. So what principles govern international civil servants? WHO Staff Rules and Regulations Article 1, and the WHO e-manual section 3.1 on duties, obligations and privileges, and WHO's ethical principles and conduct of staff establish civil servants' international character and independence. The responsibilities of WHO staff members are not national, but exclusively international. By accepting appointment with WHO, they pledge themselves to discharge of their functions and to regulate their conduct with the interests of WHO only in view. And again, this is uh, codified in WHO Staff Regulations Article 1.1.1. In the performance of duties of staff members shall neither seek nor accept instructions from any government or from any other authority external to the organization. And you'll see that is embodied in Staff Rules Article 1.3. And thirdly, staff members shall conduct themselves at all times in a manner compatible with their status as international civil servants. They shall avoid any action, and in particular any kind of public pronouncement which may adversely reflect on their status. This is uh, embodied in Staff Rules Article 1.5. So if you're WHO staff or have been hired on any contract and you are deployed under WHO, please remember that the principles that govern the work of international civil servants affects you too. There is an oath of office and loyalty. The role of WHO international civil servants is to assist the organization in its commitments to the attainment by all peoples of the highest possible level of health. And this is from WHO's constitution, Article 1. So really when we say loyalty to WHO, what we mean is loyalty to WHO's mandate as written in its constitution. Impartiality by being loyal to the interests of WHO's mission and priorities only in view. And this is the oath of office to be taken by everybody. And let me read a little bit. I solemnly swear, undertake a firm or promise to exercise in all loyalty, discretion and conscience the functions entrusted to me as an international civil servant of WHO, to discharge these functions and regulate my conduct with the interests of WHO only in view, and not to seek or accept instructions in regard to the performance of my duties from any other government or other authority external to the organization. This is again from Staff Regulations 1.10. Personal values that must guide our actions. Let's, let's look at a few of them. Loyalty WHO's goals, missions, priorities and policies. So whenever I've talked about loyalty to WHO, what we mean is loyalty to WHO's goals, missions, priorities and policies. Independence and impartiality from external sources and authorities. So really to take instruction only from the organization and not from any national government or from external sources and authorities. To perform with technical excellence, to show integrity and honesty in actions and decisions that may affect WHO, to show discretion, to show respect for dignity, worth, equality of all persons and diversity of the people, the populations and the stakeholders we work with, and accountability for what we do. So how do these values relate to ethics? 
As international civil servants, we embody the highest aspirations, goals and values of WHO and the United Nations. And we bear responsibility for translating these ideals into reality. Values are the embodiment of what we stand for. And to behave ethically is to behave in a manner consistent with our values. The expected conduct of WHO civil servants uh, include this very interesting list, and it's a list that we have to integrate and internalize. Harassment-free workplace, and workplace can refer to the field, can refer to a field office, so the environment in which we work should be harassment-free. We should work actively for prevention of sexual exploitation and abuse. We should respect national laws. There should be no interference of personal relationships in the workplace or the work environment. We should help create a safe work environment, so no violence, drugs, alcohol, smoking. We should dress appropriately. We should uh, be mindful of the organization's policies and guidance related to media relations and making public statements. We should be careful um, and sensible with the use of WHO's property, resources and information. And we should prevent the conflict of interest from arising or address these conflicts as they arise. We have a duty to observe the laws and regulations of the host country. This is very, very important. Staff members and anybody deployed under WHO have a duty to observe laws and regulations of the host country, including traffic regulations. I want to point out to you that while we have diplomatic immunity, you will find that in relation to traffic offences, your immunity is going to be waived. So please respect the laws of the country, including traffic regulations. Failure to observe laws and regulations or abuse of privileges and immunities may lead to disciplinary proceedings. Conflicts of interest, let's have a word or two about that. A conflict of interest occurs when you have a private interest that may benefit you from actions or a private interest that could interfere with official duties. So both of these aspects, something that may benefit from your actions or something that could interfere with your official duties, these are both conflicts of interest. An interest need not be financial to create a conflict of interest. Most conflicts of interest uh, come from the exercise of discretion authority. It's important to remember that no two situations are identical and what may seem applicable and acceptable in one instance may be wrong in another. There are risks to our independence and impartiality. Activities that might compromise our independence or impartiality and therefore are restricted are these. Outside employment, occupation or activities, outside our official work, outside activities including political activities, gifts, honours, awards and remuneration from outside sources, personal and family relationships, financial interests and affiliations, the way we use information, collaboration with external experts and or institutions, or publishing press statements, blogging and others. So please, whenever these arise, contact your supervisors, contact your team leaders and get clarification. Just because it's an emergency, it doesn't mean that we can risk our independence or our impartiality. There are disciplinary measures within the organization. The, the lowest level is an oral reprimand. There could be a written reprimand. There could be reassignment without reduction in grade. Uh, that is the grade at which we are paid. Dismissal for misconduct and summary dismissal for serious misconduct. I hope that none of you on deployment face any of this. So the best thing to do is to keep an op open dialogue with your team leads or your supervisors and to discuss any ethical issues that come up, any questions that arise. It is better to talk about it than to hope that it goes away. Uh, we have an Office of Compliance, Risk Management and Ethics in WHO, which provides confidential ethics advice, protects staff against retaliation. On, uh, we have a policy on whistleblowing and protecting against retaliation, administering the declaration of interest programs for staff and external experts, and promoting ethics awareness and education. And we can uh, give you the details of this department in case you wish to reach out to them as well. You can contact them on this and there's a generic email where you can write to them on ethicsoffice at who.int. So, at the end of this module, please, uh, I would ask you to revise this module and keep this module close to hand. And when in doubt, 
ask, talk, discuss, and reach out to the right people to get the advice you need. Remember, regardless of where you're from, which institution you're from, if you're deployed under WHO's flag, then you have to abide by these ethical consideration, by the values and the principles of the organization, and act as an international civil servant. I will see you in the next session. Thank you.